back to the Matrix. How did you feel when you got the mail? Mombi Minor would like you uh, to... There was no attitude uh? being chill about it. I was all <laughs> over the house jumping like a mad pussy. And then the thing is, it was during COVID, so everyone is uh, home, like neighbors. I think they were just like, what is wrong with this child? Yeah. She's finally lost it. Welcome guys to another episode of So Podable Manze. I keep telling you, each episode keeps getting better and better and better. And this time around, to my end of Hollywood, we are with one of the biggest actresses, if not the biggest actresses we have in Kenya. And she goes by the name of Mombi Minor. Mombi Minor, it's a pleasure having you here. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for having me. One thing I know is that, okay, what I think you can correct me is that your career first kicked off in 2008. Yeah. Unseen, unsung, unforgotten. Yes. That was then? That was then. Did you go to film school? No, I did not. <laughs> I did well, you, not. You're not one I, of those KNT? No, no, no. no. In fact, um, the most artsy I ever was as a child was, or when I was much younger, was um, I used to dance, I used to choreograph, oh. I used to teach salsa and hip hop. Oh, wow. And that's as far as it went. And how did you get into acting? I, I got into acting because I was taking my sister for an audition, my older sister. Um, she was very um, active in drama school yeah. back in, when, she was, when yeah. she was in high school. She was in Songari and they were really good with theater, yeah. if you know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so she was trying out for a role just for fun. Mm-hmm. And she asked me to join her. I was like, sure, I wasn't doing anything that day. And then the director looked at me and said, I think you should try. And I told her, I think you're crazy. And so we had a really long fight where my sister insisted, if you're not going to do this, imagine we're not leaving. So these are your like, So you guys walked in, the director was there. So your sister was auditioning yes. and the director was like, you know what, can you try this? Up? Yes. Did she get the role? No, but she got a different role playing my sister. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Interestingly enough. So after 2008, which um, film would you say was your next biggest? My next biggest was Shattered. Yeah. Um, It was Rita Dominic. So she came here for the first time to to film a Kenyan-Nigerian film. Yeah. Yeah. It was written by Kenyans. Mm. Yeah. it did well, it did better in Nigeria, I would say. I think she, in fact, got her first AMVCA from that. Um, and I got my second nomination for Kalasha oh. after Unseen and then now Shattered. Was this before or after Mali? Mali, in fact, I did Mali in between, um, I did Shattered in between filming Mali. So oh. It sort of happened at the same time. I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so you became a Nigerian superstar even before you, um, like... I wouldn't say Nigerian superstar. I wish. (laughs) I wish. I mean, those guys are so supportive of African content. Yeah. um, Yeah, I wish. Getting there. Getting there. (laughs) Well, one thing with the Kenyan film industry is that it is very hard to hack it. Where do you think we're going wrong with the industry? Because at some point we were bigger than Nigeria, even South Africa. So where do you think we went wrong? Um... I'll be very candid. I think it's just um, it's mismanagement. It's mm-hmm. greed. <laughs> it's um, a lot of people who came into the industry to start filming who didn't actually know much about producing itself. Mm. And so I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of holes were, <laughs> were in the foundation. And as a result, we've suffered for that daily. But I think things are starting to change now. Do we have gatekeepers and cartels? That's what we're working on now. Oh, cartels. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds too <laughs> extreme. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't <Gatekeepers>. keep us. <laughs> I'm smiling. Um, <laughs> I, I, I haven't um, experienced any that has fully been able to make a huge impact yet. Yeah. Let's put it that way. The kind of impact that we need. Yeah. Yeah. But we have good writers. We have good actors. Amazing we writers. Have, amazing. We have everything. Actors. It's just the yeah. people, some of the people. It's just, yeah, it's just some of the people. They know themselves. They know themselves. And they know I know them. <laughs> to I'm going to be in so much trouble. Well, you haven't named names. You're very safe. You're very safe. So one thing I was telling my friends is that I don't think Mm. I can be an actress. Okay. You know why? Why? This scenes, this make out scenes, this extreme scenes, I think I'd catch feelings. You think so? I think so. 
Girl, you'd be surprised. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've direction. had those scenes, right? <laughs> I have. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm waiting for the dates. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at you like, mm-hmm, and <laughs> I have. Um, okay, so I think my first, the first time I kissed someone on screen was so, it was, uh, the environment was not very, as professional as I'd have liked it to be. Oh, yeah. Because um, you see it in the script and you're like, okay, fine, we're going to peg. And yeah. then some, a couple of, well, the first two guys that that happened with, I think they were very excited and... <laughs> <laughs> Acting is not easy. It's not easy. Oh. It's not for the faint hearted. It's not easy. It's not at all. So you're trying to hide the shock. And you're like, I'm not sure why this is happening, but okay. <laughs> and the guy's smiling afterwards. You're like, yeah, that's not fine. That's not good. Yeah. Um, but I had a very different experience when I filmed um, an intimate scene um, um, in an international set, which was um, for Sense8. Yeah. It was so professional mm. and very technical. To be honest, quite boring because <laughs> Paul is laughing. <laughs> yeah, that's usually the face. Like, boring, boring in the sense that um, everything is so mechanical. Yes. But then that's when you know, yeah, it is acting. Yeah, it is because you're supposed to look like you're enjoying it. But there's someone behind the scene saying, "Okay, turn your head this way and then turn it left." That sounds put your awkward. Hand though. Up. That sounds exactly. awkward. That's what I mean. So it's so boring and technical. Like I'd rather do a fight scene or a yeah. crying scene. Yeah, that has more. Emotion motion to it so the rest because also you're trying to um, maintain boundaries with each other yeah. and respect each other's space yeah. there's no room for <laughs> any like, excitement it's good you've mentioned since eight was that like your first um international movie it was mm-hmm. yeah. how did that come to be uh, so we did audition so they had a product they they um connect with a production company here who auditioned about 30 of us actresses and we did a callback came out to 10 and then came down to two um they flew us to berlin because they couldn't quite decide between the two of us i did not unpack because it's just one of those things where um whoever gets the role stays and whoever doesn't leaves yeah, yeah. it felt like a reality show i yeah. I'm, i'll never hate on any of these guys who are on high <laughs> emotions during the i'll know i was like never, mm-hmm, never. <laughs> i have mad respect for them yeah. um yeah so they wanted the person who gets a role to stay behind to meet the rest of the cast and and just sit with the directors and do a read through um so that was my first and truly just amazing so um, one thing about actors and actresses when you're given a role you have to like immerse yourself into it yeah have you ever had a role that got you into the deep end and you were a bit confused with Maina Mumbi, the personality and the role you're given? I would say, um, yeah, especially when I was new, when I was still learning the ropes, because ideally I learned on set. Everything yeah. that I learned, I was learning from actors, from crew, from directors, everything that I could. Yeah. And so there was a very fine line, especially with Mali. And I didn't realize until we were done filming just how much um, Nandi Mali affected me personally. Yeah. Um, so it took like maybe a year for me to recover. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I, I truly didn't know that. Why I didn't understand why all I wanted to do was sleep. <laughs> Kumbe, it was my body just saying, hey, access. You got out of it by yourself, Mama. You had to get help. Drinking helped. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fair enough. Honestly speaking, not, not, well, yeah, don't use we found ourselves example. in such situations. Not, not a good example. Not to judge. No, you can't. Truly, yeah, to judge. Truly. First of all, you're Kenyan, so it's already like our second jobo anyway. So <laughs> I don't know. You can't. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, and not. Uh, but um, the the second one that I feel really impacted me a lot emotionally was Nafsi. Oh, yeah, that one really took a toll on me emotionally. I felt like I didn't really have room or time to recover from it because I'd also gotten the biggest gig of my entire life, Directions. And um, yeah, even just filming it, in the middle of filming it, I would get nightmares. Um, It was horrible. It was a horrible experience for me (laughs) emotionally and yet very fulfilling because I knew we're telling such an impactful story. Yeah. And I think when I when I see the the results and I see how people have been impacted by it and how people talk about the movie. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it was it was worth it. (laughs) And I think almost every role, unless you're maybe doing a comedy um, as an actor will affect you in some way or the other. 
depending again on on your own I don't know what I don't know what word to use to be honest yeah. but I do feel that often um a lot of artists will result to taking um drugs or alcohol in order to numb or try and get through yeah what they're experiencing yeah. which I think just adds on you know because most of these things are depressants anyway True. so um unfortunately it's a way to release but at the same time it's something that's adding on to what you're um trying to run away from you know, you've mentioned alcohol and I've just remembered we've had some pretty known actors mm. in Kenya mm. like get into alcoholism mm. is it that we lack guidance when it comes to in the film industry like once you immerse yourself in such roles like after that do you think such sets or directors or whoever's involved mm. like should there be a therapist counselor ideally yes. ideally there should be a therapist mm-hmm. or a counselor um and also something that we tend to take for granted is um what we call derolling mm-hmm. after finishing you need time to literally let go of the character or let go of whatever impact the character has had on you. Yeah. Um and not very many well. Can't. <laughs> I haven't encountered any um production that has taken that into into consideration. Even in talk about it during Nafsi. Oh yeah. It actually was with Ruben Kodanga, but we never had the time to do it unfortunately, but I think now we're wiser. <laughs> yeah, you know All of better. Us. Yeah. So yeah. after Sense8, we had Nafsi and yes. we talked about it. And after Nafsi, I think immediately after shooting Nafsi, yeah, you went to shoot The Matrix yes. in Berlin. Mm-hmm. First of all, tell us, how did you feel when you got the mail? You know what, Mombi Minor would like you uh, to... There was <laughs> no attitude uh? being chill about it. I was <laughs> all over the house jumping like a mad person. And then the thing is, it was during COVID, so everyone is uh, home, like neighbors. I think they were just like, what is wrong with this child? Yeah. She's finally lost it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I initially, I didn't know that they were they were casting me for The Matrix because oh. I knew that they had taken a production break because of uh, COVID. COVID, of yeah. course. So when I got the email and they said... Um, I want you for project ice cream. Me the Dulai am. I was like, you know what? Fast it's work. I'm so excited. Too they said, you know, some of the sense in gang are going part of it. So I genuinely thought it was like a docu series. Yeah. So I was like, project okay, they're doing this while they wait to get back to the matrix. When they said now, so of course I jumped out and around the house yeah. for that. But now yeah. they told send me another email just saying just in case you were not sure. This is It's hint hint. Ah, I was done, finished. Jumped all over the house again. <laughs> <laughs> press, press, thankful, you know, tears the whole the whole shebang yeah it was it was really did you even get to tell anyone because being told um something like that yeah. like you have to keep it quiet yeah um i i told um my lawyer who yeah. was working as my as my manager that's well she's um she's kenyan yeah. uh that's the only person that i told for a few months until um one i got the visa because again we're on lockdown I oh, wasn't sure if the German embassy was even going oh, to open wow. for, yeah. for me which they did again just miracle after miracle it was just fully yeah god's work so when you got on set you meet guys like Keanu Reeves was that intimidating oddly not intimidating at all not with him <laughs> he was so easy yeah. in fact it was so weird <laughs> cuz <laughs> i thought i I thought I would have a lot of feelings about it. I had feelings about the set. Yeah. How big everything was. It helped that I'd really worked with with the directors, so that was sort of took the edge off. Yeah. It helped that some of the cast who I'd worked with before in Sense8 prior to me starting filming, um they knew that I was going for a dress rehearsal and said, "Oh, please come through and say hi." And the way they welcomed me, I was like, "Listen, I am the star <laughs> of this show." movie I mean whatever like who cares about anyone else they were so warm and that just took the edge off completely um so by the time we started filming now that's that's when I started feeling the pressure because I was like okay Kenyan girl all the way from Africa who is this woman why is she here she better bring her A game um so my first scene was with Keanu and I was sweating I was 
sweating. I, I promise you they removed that. They edited off Ooh. the sweat from my because <laughs> I kept I kept thinking, gosh, now my first scene, everyone's just gonna be like, wow. Yeah. Okay, girl from Africa, truly, you guys always just they were always looking Hollywood yeah. movies, sweating and red eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fam, <laughs> me. It's true. It's true. I don't know why we always have red eyes in most <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm just here for blood today. Anyway, um, yeah, so it was very nerve wracking. But then once I got into it, I realized that interestingly, every set is the same. It's just the budget and professionalism that's different. Yeah. And these guys are so passionate about what they're doing that you want to give everything that you have. And um, there's room for mistake, but also none. Yeah. And that's the moment I, I became so grateful for every job that I've ever done in Kenya because it felt like this is practice. Oh. It was practice for that, that moment, you know, because yeah. it's like I, I, I keep um, comparing it to, to Olympic runners, to our runners. Ooh, yeah. I mean, they're yeah. running these hills like crazy. By the time they're, <laughs> they're doing the, the, yeah. the, the, the whatever, the competition, it seems like a breeze. But it's because yeah. they've gone through they're such a rough... The whole time. Yeah. yeah, so everything else seems a lot smoother. Like your body and your mind is prepared, sort of like an autopilot. Yeah. And that's what it felt like um, for me. So it really made me very grateful for every experience that I've had here. The good and the bad. And the bad. Yeah. What would you tell the Mumbi Miner in 2008? If you compare the whole journey you've had... Mm, yes, you're the baddest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, never doubt yourself, you know. I think that for so long, I, I felt like I needed to prove myself. And for so long, I doubted my own um, abilities and capabilities simply because I wasn't trained or because I wasn't a thespian, you know, um, because I was learning on the go. And I realized that as long as you're passionate about what you're doing, mm-hmm. you're consistent. Yeah. And as professional as you possibly can be, truly, there's no way you will not get there. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of patience, which is sometimes the tough part. That's, that's the hardest part. That's truly, the hardest part. Truly, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, musicians normally say, I'd like to work with this artist. Mm. I'd like to work with this person. As Mumbi Minor, would you say you'd like to find yourself in a certain set or film? Like, where do you see yourself? Oh, Yeah. I would love to work with Shonda Rhimes. Whew. I mean, everything she touches is good. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah. She's breaking barriers in ways that... Um, I, I, her <laughs> writing, her vision, I... I oh, shiver me timbers. Like, surely she is just it. Yeah. Um, as far as actors, I would probably now faint if I saw Denzel. Like, if I worked Ooh. with him. That one, I'm like... That mm. will be it. You'll be like, there's so many. The list is is large. Yeah, truly, yeah. Viola Davis that goes without saying. Like, come on, how can I not say her? Like, truly, <laughs> um, Meryl Streep, Angelina Jolie. I mean, they're they're people who I look at, and they've created a very interesting niche for themselves. And most of them, I feel, have been, I mean, trailblazers and rebellious. And yeah. I have a soft spot for that, maybe because I am as well. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, my list is very long. It's very long. Yes, but the, off the top of my head, that those are the first people that have come to me. Do you watch head. yourself? Rarely. Yeah? Definitely not with other people, unless it's like a premiere. <laughs> like, that's yeah. just... Mm-mm. That's it. <laughs> nope. Like, it's are you one of those people who, like, you criticize yourself so, so much. much? You're like, so oh, very oh, much. That's so awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're t- they're, I do have moments where I'm like, oh, that yeah. And I'm like, no, I shouldn't say that. That's weird. Because <laughs> you're watching yourself. Like, this is narcissism in ways that no one can describe. But it's not also. It's yeah. like, um, the times that I will watch my work is to see how I can improve myself a lot of the times. And sometimes if I've genuinely forgotten what I've done, because maybe I was in a weird space and I'm not sure whether, yeah. how that translated on yeah. screen. And um, as Mumbi Minor, you have really grown and your career has just taken a really different direction. And the film industry, of course, in Kenya is probably one of the toughest ones we have. Mm. And we have a lot of young people just really trying to hack through it. What advice would you give the young Kenyans and East Africans listening to you right now? Um, 
You know what I've I've really realized, especially now that I've come back into the Kenyan industry quite a bit, and I've met quite a few new young actors, and they are fierce. I I oof, they are fierce, and I love it for them. I love it for them because they're passionate and they know what they want. I wasn't sure about what I wanted, um, so I would say that first and foremost is just patience because I feel like a lot of them are so impatient. They want everything now. Yeah. And the thing is, sometimes you think that you want a thing, but maybe you're not ready for it, right? And that can easily ruin your entire career because yeah. you're not ready for yeah. it. So I really think that um, patience is a thing. Professionalism is a huge thing. Don't take any small role for granted mm. because people are always watching. That's true. And you have no idea who you're working with today, what they'll be able to do for you tomorrow. True. Um, or who's watching you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm. And... Um, and be very, um, I think boundaries are really important with yourself in terms of being clear, um, to not be taken advantage of also as well. I think that that's something that's, um, very key (laughs) right now. Are you leaving us for Hollywood soon? She she did it anyway, (laughs) didn't she? (laughs) You know what, um... I, I stay open. Yeah. <laughs> I stay open to projects. Um, and I think when I'm ready to share, I will share. <laughs> Read between the lines. True. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just like, how do I dodge? <laughs> um, thank you so much. And you are doing amazing things and inspiring a lot of us, even us who are not actors or actresses. Thank you. And keep doing your thing, man. Thank you. Are you directing anything anytime soon then? No, not yet. Mm-hmm. But that is something that I am leaning towards. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So we have, guys, we went to Hollywood Kidogo EV and each episode keeps getting better. We've had the amazing, one of the biggest actresses we have in East Africa, Mumbi Minor. Just stay tuned for the next episode and see who comes through. Sindio. Deuces.